How beautiful heaven must be, sweet land of the happy and free. Oh, hello out there. <laughs> uh, I, I really knew you were there, but uh, I'm just singing about heaven and I've been thinking about heaven. And, uh, you know, it's an interesting subject because there's so many people don't understand about heaven. And everybody says they want to go there, but they, you know, they don't want to go there right now. They want to go there, but they don't want to go there right now. I can still remember years ago, my mother uh, is, is in heaven, but my mother lived to be 99 years and nine months old. And I, I still remember uh, when she was about 95, uh, she got us. She went through a sick spell and really looked bad. Uh, hospice was called in, and and uh, all the kids. We all thought that it was time mom was mom was going to go to heaven. And so, I still remember. Uh, I was gathered around her bed one one day, and I was talking to her, and I we all thought she was getting ready to pass, and. And so I said, I said, I was talking to mom about heaven and I said, mom, oh, heaven is just so wonderful. It's just so glorious. And I, I began to talk about heaven and everything. And I said, and, and, you, and dad's there and you're going to be with dad again. I said, mom, don't you just want to go to heaven? And I still remember she pointed that little bony finger at me and she said, I do, but not right now. <laughs> And I suspect that's pretty much the condition of everybody that's watching, and I uh, suppose myself as well. You know, we want to go, but it, it's still, it's, it's somewhat of the unknown. And uh, even though we know the things we can understand from the Bible, we know it's, it's the ultimate place, it's glorious, and it's wonderful, and yet uh, it's like something we've never been there, and we're pretty comfortable where we are. But I want to talk about heaven just a little while today, and uh, I, want to, I want to just uh, read some scripture found in Hebrews chapter 11. Uh, most of the scripture I'm going to read today, and I'm going to read quite a bit, uh, whether we'll get through with this sermon today or whether we continue it next week, I don't know. We'll just see how that goes. But I want to give seven uh, reasons that heaven will be so awesome. And I want you to continue to uh, tune in all the way through, whether it's just today or whether it incorporates next Sunday as well, because the seventh reason is the greatest reason of all. And so uh, stay with me all the way through it. We're going to look in the book of Hebrews to get started today in chapter 11, and we're going to begin at verse 13. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 13 and the scripture, almost all the scripture I'm going to use today in this message is going to be from uh, a translation known as the message, the Bible in contemporary language. And so it's going to be, it's going to be different from your King James if you're following along in your Bible or on your phone or your iPad or whatever you're, you're using. Uh, this is going to be a little bit, it's going to read a little bit different. Uh, so let's get started. Hebrews chapter 11. And verse 13, uh, it says, Each one of these people of faith died, not yet having in hand what was promised, but still believing. How did they do it? They saw it afar off in the distance. They waved their greeting and accepted the fact that they were transients in this world. People who live this way make it plain that they're looking for their true home. We're talking about heaven. If they were homesick for the old country, the scripture says here, they could have gone back anytime they wanted, but they were after a far better country than that, heaven country. I like that. You can see why God is so proud of them and has a city waiting for them. And folks, that we know in the New Testament, we're informed about the city is named the New Jerusalem. And it's the capital city of heaven going to come down one of these days right down to this planet. And it's going to be the home of 
all the saved redeemed by the blood and sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Oh, and it's going to be an awesome place. Uh, I remember, I remember uh, quite a few years ago, we were pastoring a church, and it was a Sunday morning, and this young man came in and to the church building, and he had his little daughter with him. And uh, I, knew, uh, I knew they were getting ready to go on vacation. That was on a Sunday morning. They were going to leave for vacation Thursday of that week. And so when this young man and his little daughter came in, I said, man, you guys are just practically on vacation, aren't you? And he said, boy, you don't know the half of it. He said, and he pointed at his daughter, and he said, she is so excited about going on vacation, about this vacation and where we're going. She already has her little suitcase packed. And, uh, and I said to her, well, you're probably going to need some things that are in that suitcase. She was undaunted, boy. She was packed, and she was excited. And I'm sure that as it got closer to Thursday when they were going to get in the car and pull out, it was their departure time, she was more excited than ever. And that's kind of the way it is with us. We as Christians have a departure day that's getting closer every day. We're going to go to heaven and folks, I want to tell you, it's going to be awesome. You don't want to miss it. If you have an unsaved friend, loved one or somebody, oh, you might want to get them in to listen to this. Uh, who knows what we're going to talk about might make them want to go. Praise God. I hope so. Because if you miss heaven, I want to tell you, you missed, you missed everything. You missed, you missed the big the big uh, prize because heaven is, uh, is, an, is going to be an awesome, awesome reality. So let's look about seven reasons heaven will be so awesome. And the first one that I want to mention to you today, heaven is going to be so awesome because we're going to have a new body in heaven. And I want, to, I want to spend some time talking about that. Uh, I, you know, folks, we need to understand a little bit of what heaven's going to be like because, you know, there's a lot of people think they don't want to go to heaven because they have this, this, they have this idea about heaven. Uh, it's like uh, one famous rich person, I'm not going to call his name, but one famous rich person uh, years ago said, heaven, boring, 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 he said. Who wants to go to heaven and float on a cloud for eternity, strumming on a harp? Boring, 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 he said. I want to go to hell and have a party with my friends. Well, that showed a lot of ignorance. It showed a lot of uh, not knowing, not knowing the truth of God, uh, being de deceived by this world. But a lot of Christians, folks, a lot of Christians have no idea of what is in store for them in heaven. A lot of people kind of have that idea of heaven that they're going to go and they're going to go and they're going to be on a cloud. They're going to have a harp. They're going to play it. There's also I, I see people all the time and say. Uh, about their departed loved one. Well, they became an angel today. Well, they did not become an angel today. We're human beings, and uh, angels are a whole different creation of God, and we're not going to become angels. Amen? <laughs> we're we're going to be the redeemed, uh, the bride of Jesus Christ, and, and it's going to be better than being an angel. The Apostle Paul taught and said, he said, don't you know that you will judge angels? talking to the church. And so, folks, oh, uh, heaven's going to be a glorious place. It's going to be awesome. And here's uh, uh, the, one of the things that's going to allow us to enjoy heaven is we're going to have a new body. We couldn't enjoy heaven in the body we have. It has to be changed. And so we want to talk about that, and I want to read some scripture. It's found in the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, and we're going to begin at verse 51, read three, three verses there. And it's talking about uh, the rapture of the church, the changing of our bodies. Paul says, but let me tell you something wonderful, a mystery I'll probably never fully understand. 
we're not all going to die, but we are all going to be changed, our bodies. You hear a blast to end all blasts from a trumpet, and in the time that you look up and blink your eyes, it's over. On signal from that trumpet, from heaven, the dead will be up and out of their graves. Now, folks, that's when he says that, he's talking about their bodies. Their spirit and soul was already in heaven. Their spirit and soul, when they died or, or passed, uh, their spirit and soul went to be with the Lord. Their bodies went back into the ground, buried or they were cremated or whatever. Their bodies did not go to heaven because their bodies can't go to heaven until they're changed. And so uh, he's talking about that the dead bodies will come up out of the graves beyond the reach of death, never to die again. At the same moment, in the same way, we'll all be changed. When he's talking about that, he's saying all of us that have not died and are alive. In the resurrection scheme of things, this has to happen. Everything perishable taken off the shelves and replaced by the imperishable, this mortal replaced by the immortal. Amen. It's going to be a change. Our bodies are going to be changed in a moment. In the twinkling of an eye, our bodies are going to be changed. The dead in Christ will rise and they'll be changed instantan instantaneously. Everybody that's alive on the earth at the time that the trumpet of God blows and the rapture occurs will be changed in a twinkling of an eye and uh, will be our bodies will be reunited with our spirit and our soul, and we will be with the Lord. Amen? And we'll be ready for heaven. It's a new body. Now, I want to read you, what's that body going to be like? I mean, uh, you know, this is where people, a lot of times they just don't know. It's, it's like the many that I see that say, oh, we're going to be changed into an angel. No, we're not going to be changed into an angel. We're, it's much better than that. We're going to be changed like to be like Jesus. Oh, we're not going to be Jesus. We're not going to physically look like Jesus. We're not going to be God, but we're going to, our bodies are going to be changed. Uh, let me put it this way, and we're going to get into this more in a minute. Now, and I want you to get this because it's wonderful. Our life source, that which causes us life, is going to be changed into the life source that powers Jesus Christ. The same life source is going to power us. And so, uh, look at look at First John chapter three and verse two. It says, "Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it has not yet does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when He shall appear." We shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Oh, that's glorious. Now, some people would uh, take a different translation of that verse and try to make it into something else. But it means exactly what it says. We're going to be changed to be like him. How We're going to be fashioned like his glorious body. And we're, we're actually told that. Uh, in uh, Philippians chapter 3 and verse 20 and 21. I want to read that to you. Philippians chapter 3, verse 20 and 21. It says, but there's, uh, there's far more to life for us. I want, you to, I want you to get this. There's far more to life for us. We are citizens of high heaven. We're waiting the arrival of the Savior, the Master, Jesus Christ. Now listen to this, verse 21. Who will transform our earthly bodies into the glorious bodies like his own. Woo! Glory. Oh, that, that, that ought to make you shout. We'll be, he's going to transform our earthly bodies, these old, these old bodies that are so vile. Paul, uh, Paul said our, our bodies are vile. They're subject to death. They're subject to, 
tests and temptations and the pull of sin and, and sickness and disease and all these, all these things. They're going to be changed and they're going to be changed like his body. Oh, I hope you're getting that. Look at, look at what else it says. He'll make us beautiful and whole with the same powerful skill by which he's putting everything as it should be under and around him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, heaven is, is glorious, and it's going to be glorious uh, for us all. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Let's read, let's read an, uh, one more verse. Uh, well, let's actually read about three verses there, but about the change that's going to happen, and we're going to get a new body. It says this, this image of planting a dead seed and raising a live plant is a mere sketch at best, but perhaps it will help in approaching the mystery of the resurrection body. But only if you keep in mind that when we're raised, we're raised for good, alive forever. The corpse that's planted is no beauty. But when it's raised, it's glorious. Hallelujah. Now, I, I just, in, the, in the case there's an unsaved person watching, I, I, I didn't ever think about this until one of my uncles years ago, we were talking about uh, the resurrection and our bodies being resurrected, changed to be like Jesus. And he said, but do you know that every person that has died without Christ, that when their body is resurrected, it will be the same body in the same condition as it was when it went in the grave. If it died with AIDS, it's going to come out of the grave with AIDS. If it dies with cancer, it's going to come out of the grave with cancer because it's not going to be changed. It's the spirit is going to be reunited with that body and stand before the judgment seat of Christ, the great white throne of judgment, and their sins are going to be listed and they're going to be consigned to go away from God forever into everlasting punishment. Now, folks, that I just threw that in because there's a big difference here. As a Christian, those that have died are going to be changed. And, and Paul says here, uh, the corpse that is planted is no beauty, but when it's raised, it's glorious. Put in the ground weak, it comes up powerful. The seed sown is natural. The seed grown is supernatural. Same seed, same body, but what a difference from when it goes down in physical mortality to when it is raised up in spiritual immortality. Woo! Glory. You see, this is what, this is what in, in John chapter 10 and verse 10 this is what Jesus was actually referring to. And we, I know, we, we have this shallow, simple, uh, perverted gospel that's being preached today. Uh, it's, it's called the prosperity gospel. And it's all focused on this life and how to be rich in this life. And all that's going to pass away. And this scripture, John 10 and 10, is used a lot by those people that profess that kind of theology. Jesus said, a thief is only there to steal and kill and destroy. He says, I came that you can have life and you can have life more abundantly in the King James. But I've come that you can have eternal life, more and better life than you ever dreamed of in the contemporary language. Now, see... Uh, the, the people try to use that now and they like to say, well, you know, you get saved, you start living for God and you live the faith life and you command blessings and all of this and, and oh, you're just going to have such a good life. It's going to be life more abundantly. Well, you know, there's a, there's a kernel of truth in all, in all deception. In all perversion, there's a kernel of truth and there's a kernel of truth in that. 
I believe that if we get saved and we get, begin to live by the scriptures and obey God's word, you're putting good seed in the ground. You're going to start getting up a good crop and life's going to go better for you, for anybody. That, that, and, I'm, and I say that knowing that God causes the rain to fall on the just and the unjust alike. And we all, we have our trials, our temptations, our failures, sometimes our sicknesses, our valleys that we walk through, our mountains that we trot upon. But folks, uh, life is certainly better for the, for the Christian. Uh, but this, that's not what this verse is referring to. He said, I've come that you might have life and you might have it more abundantly. And when he's talking about that, folks, he's talking about the life that you're going to have when this change occurs. Because see, uh, when, when that resurrection takes place, when, whether you die and your spirit and uh, soul goes to heaven waiting on your body to be resurrected, when that resurrection takes place, whether you're alive or in the grave, our bodies are changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye to be like his body, then that's going to be life and life more abundantly. You know why it's going to be so good? Because it's pure, it's pure life. And when I say pure, I, I don't think I can even convey uh, what, I, what I'm feeling when I say pure. The Bible says that, that there's no sin in God. The Bible says he's light and in him is no darkness at all. He is pure light. He is life and in him is no death at all. None. No death at all. Nothing that's associated with the fall of Adam and Eve in the garden is in God. And when, we're, when our bodies are changed, uh, our, life cha our life force is going to be changed. See, uh, your life force right now and mine, the we know this life is in the blood. If you get wounded and you cut an artery and your blood's all pumping out, if you don't get it stopped, uh, you lose enough blood, you die because your life is in the blood. And uh, we have all this filtration system built in and, uh, and the way we eliminate foods and all of these things that help uh, keep the blood purified where we're able to live. And, uh, and so life is in the blood. But when the resurrection takes place, see, when Jesus died, he bled for us. He shed his blood for us on the cross. Some people say he shed every drop of his blood on the cross. It was a bloody, bloody scene. And when he, when he bled like that and he died, the, the, it was his life force. And, uh, and of course, he, he died because his life at that time was in the blood. But when he was resurrected, when he came forth from the tomb, his life, was, his life force was not blood. It was the spirit, the most holy spirit of God. Now, when you say Holy Spirit, it means if, if it's Holy Spirit, it means there's nothing of sin in it. There's nothing of the fall in it. So there's no death. There's no sorrow. There's no pain. There's no sickness. There's no shame. There's, there's nothing that's associated with the fall of sin because it's the Holy Spirit of God. And when he came out of the grave... What raised him was the Spirit of God giving him life. And his life was of, was, of the, was of the Spirit and not the blood. Oh, praise God. I, I just, I've not even hardly started in this message, so I'm going to have to finish it next Sunday. I, I hope that you will tune in again next Sunday. Because, oh, this is, this is just so good. I want to go to heaven. Heaven is going to be so awesome. I want to ask you right now, are you ready to go to heaven? If you died right now, would you, 
would you go to heaven? This Jill and I just had a dear, dear friend that just passed away. We got a phone call early uh, Friday morning, and it was from my niece, and her husband had had a heart attack, and uh, and they'd taken him in the ambulance. And shortly thereafter, she called, and her husband uh, had passed away. He, I, I, we we believe that he cried out to God and was saved, and so we rejoice over that. But uh, listen, if you miss heaven. If you miss heaven, you missed everything. You missed it all. See, this new reality of heaven that I'm going to speak about next Sunday as well is going to last forever and ever and ever and ever. Oh, and it's going to be so glorious. And there's an alternative. There's a hell that's going to last forever and ever and ever. Christian, draw near to the Lord where time is close we're ready we're getting ready for the trump of God to sound and that change is going to take place in our bodies if you're if you're looking you're not a Christian pray with me right now as we pray father we just thank you Lord we thank you that you love us so much and father I, I pray right now most especially if there's any Lord that watch this and they're not a Christian father I pray with all my heart, that they would surrender to you and say, Lord, I don't, maybe I don't know anything about it, but I know I'm a sinner. I know I need a Savior. And Lord Jesus, I ask you to save my soul. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you said, if they would ask, you would do it. You would be faithful and just to save them. Father, save them this moment. I pray for every Christian that they would be quickened, strengthened, uplifted, healed in their body if they're sick. And Father, I thank you for that as well. And everybody said amen and amen. I want to thank you for watching today. And uh, tune us in. Uh, we're on Facebook and YouTube. Like us on Facebook. Share us on Facebook. If you, if you like the message, if it blessed you, share it on Facebook. Say some nice things. And uh, let us know that you're enjoying the ministry. God bless until we see you again next week.